Hey, Kaya. What's up? department issue you. Glock, bro. The best. Mm. That's cute. What did what your department issue you, man? Well, they love us. Sig P320. You sure they like you guys? Uh, you're responsible for every run that comes out of that thing, bro, so be careful. Anyways, let's talk about what guns do most law enforcement agencies use and why. Welcome back to Class Firearms, guys. Kai over here. And today we're going to talk about what guns do most law enforcement agencies use and why, and should you follow that trend. But before we do that, we've got a new special guest here, Aaron. What's up, brother? Brother. Dylan! You son of a bitch. Aaron is our new guy here, I new am. blood in town. You guys probably know him. He was with CAA, right? Correct. Exactly. So he was a rep here. He showed up here at Classic, did a couple of videos. If you haven't seen him, check him out. But he's now with Classic Firearms, and we're happy to have him here. With that being said, before we get into our topic, Aaron, why don't you introduce yourself, man? So my name is Aaron Suzo. Um, I'm prior law, law enforcement. I worked out in the city of Hayward in California. Did several years out there, and now I'm happy to be in the private sector of things with uh, this gentleman here. Awesome. How do you like the private sector? It's a whole lot better. A whole lot A lot better. more room for uh, activities, I believe they call it. Activities. I agree with you. And here's the thing. It'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. Much more relaxed. You're kind of... It's just fun to be a private citizen, dude. It is. It I is. like it. Yeah. It Anytime. As long as we have our rights, right? <laughs> but anyways, uh, <laughs> moving on. So today we're going to talk about, obviously, which uh, gun, sidearm, I guess, most law enforcement agencies use and why. And with that being said, we've got three of them. Glock, obviously, Smith & Wesson, and Sid. So I want to start with you. Okay. What gun did you carry when you were a police officer? So when I was working with Hayward, my first uh, sidearm was the SIG P226. Oh man, how did you um, like that? I liked it. Um, did? Honestly, I was newer to guns when I first came on, so uh -huh. I didn't really have too much favoritism in one route of things. Um, I learned how to use the single action and double action as the 226 is here. Obviously, there's a lot more functionality with this in reference to decockers. Yeah. Single, like I said. Um, and a double action there. Uh, then we graduated and we went over to the P320. Um, Be careful. Yep. <laughs> just, just saying. Clint, Clint knows what I'm talking about. I see what you're saying. I see what you did there. So this is a P320, the M18 version, but we had the full size, which would be your M17 version. We didn't have the safety on it, um, as the US military uses now. Uh, what I liked about it was the modularity, the lightness, um, and then obviously the things that you could put on accessory-wise, so on and so forth when it comes to that. Um, obviously, SIG oh, stepped up the game, Gucci, right and here. this is my Gucci uh, P320, the X5, but yeah. obviously I didn't use this on duty, but this is something to have for when you retire and you get out and you want to play around a little bit. I exactly. wouldn't use this on duty, though. But, yeah. What did you think about the... Uh you know, accuracy, reliability on the things. I liked them a lot. I honestly, I liked them a lot. Um, I unfortunately was involved in a couple of OISs out there okay. and uh, put them to the test, and they did the job. So I um, can't say I have too much complaints about that's, that. That's good to know, man. Yeah. You say you didn't have the external safeties. Correct. Correct. What do you think about external safeties for duty? Honestly, for duty, I don't think there's any need for them. No. I think that that additional move is an additional second, and some people argue with this that additional second you should be able to be smooth through it, but. Preferably, if you could take that tenth of a second away and use it towards what you have to utilize, yeah. uh, diminishing the threat or taking care of a threat, I'd rather do that. Absolutely exactly. agreed. I can't stand the external safeties when it comes to a duty gun, for any guns, honestly. I'm not even trained on them. But even if you are, guys, like this, in this case, we got the uh, Smith & Wesson MMP9 over here. Just empty gun. So here's, I want to show you this. I don't know which camera is going to pick this up, but when I have it presented like that, this has happened to me, by the way. So this is not like some theory. Right. Okay, this happened. So you draw your gun, you get it out of the holster. It, I mistakenly, inadvertently activated the safety. Now that's a dead man's gun right here. Right. You know what that means? A lot of people should know a gun that doesn't go bang, that's a dead man's gun. So it literally does happen. So, because this thumb goes up, because you know, in a stressful situation, you know, you do, you do actually tense up. Right. You squeeze things a lot harder than you normally do. That's why we train to kind of overcome that. And this happens, and guess what? That's bad. At the same time, some people obviously have it. They carry it with the safety on, 
and then when they draw the gun, they forget. Right. So the whole second thing, I agree with you, I think that's a very important thing that I would rather not even deal with that. But some people, because they're not all that well trained, they even forget to engage, uh, disengage this. Right. So now you got your dead man's gun. So this is another point of failure for me, which I just demonstrated and based on what you also said, it's something that I'm not a big fan of. But you carried six hours. I have absolutely zero experience when it comes to six hours. I've never carried them. In fact, I think the very first six hour I've ever fired was here at Classic. And I've been with Classic for a year now. Right, so you so transitioned I, over to SIG from Classic? Uh, negative. Okay, just asking. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> Do I look like Clint? Jesus. <laughs> okay. Shots quality, sorry. Shots fired. <laughs> there he is. All right. So. Uh, I carried Glocks. In fact, actually, when I first got in law enforcement, I was given an M MMP9, the older version, the, okay. I think Gen 1s that they had, which in this case we have the MMP9, M2.0. These are the law enforcement buybacks that we have here at Classic at a price, oh my God, I don't even know how they're not gone yet. But this is that gun, suppressor right size, really awesome gun, works fantastic. I had the, you know, not non MOS version, the hinge trigger, which I'm not a big fan of, okay. got the job done just fine and I was I, I had a Glock 23 personal 40 caliber mm -hmm. so I kind of trained myself a little bit but in law enforcement first six years I, I carried the uh, MMP 40 and I got really acclimated to this MMP platform and I loved it and it gave me absolutely no problem and a I did get into an incident with a a, a gentleman let's just say okay, like three four in the morning December like below 30 degrees in the river up in uh, Rockford, Illinois, and I was like above waist deep water, and this gun was completely submerged the entire fight that I was in, and this gun still worked just fine, and it was all muddy and dirty. It wasn't right. just wet, right? It still worked, so definitely very, very reliable. No external safety, as you see. After that, when I transitioned further into my law enforcement career, I was issued Glocks, a Glock 22 40 caliber, and then Glocks 19 or 7 and 17 both of them actually. And I absolutely love Glocks. And the reason I love them because they're just very reliable. Okay. So let's talk about this real quick then. So that you carry that uh, six, uh, six hours, I've got the Glocks and the MMP here. What is the most important thing when it comes to a gun? For when you pull that trigger that it actually fires and works is the biggest thing when it comes down to things. And then in reference to what you're saying, I know you'll probably go over this in a second. Yeah, of course, no, Glocks, go ahead, man. In law enforcement, as we know, we never get into that perfect daylight shooting. It's always something where you're rolling around in mud. You're Like you said, you're waist deep in water before yep. you're able to get your gun out. And a lot of these Gucci guns, sometimes they look great. These 1911s, so on and so forth, whoever it may be, you submerge them in a little bit of water, put dirt, sand, whatever it may be, and you go to take that shot you need to take. Sometimes they don't click. I will state that I know the studies that have been done on Glocks and the mud test, sand test, water test, they're known to fire every single time. Absolutely, so. and there's and the reason for that is, guys, like this is a great point, dude. When it comes to reliability, there is less parts in here, so sometimes less is more. Right. So this is a very simple weapon system, and these are kind of they follow something similar, which we're going to talk about the modularity of that. Right. But the very simple weapon system right here. So because it's so simple, there's less moving parts, less points of failure. Therefore, you have a, a more reliable platform. Now. Uh, Actually, in fact, Glocks, uh, Glock is the one that started it all. This whole polymer body thing, this this type of firearm. Right. Glock is w uh, the company that started it back in 19 early 1980s. Gaston Glock, the creator of uh, Glock, he wasn't a firearms expert. He was a synthetic polymer expert. So what he did was he heard that Austrian military was coming up with. Uh, uh, they wanted to replace their Walthers, like from World War II. Right. And it was just saying, old technology, they wanted something more appropriate to 1980s, and Gaston Glock was like, you know what, let's assemble a team and come up with something different. So Gaston Glock worked on the polymer body, and the other firearms expert talked about everything else, and they kind of put their, uh, gave their inputs, and they came up with the Generation 1 Glock 17, which looked very similar to this right here, which is a Gen 2 Glock 17 here, and the, this, these were produced from 1988 to 1998, so this is a very, very old law enforcement trade-in. And Glock was able to, like initially they thought, oh, plastic gun, 
right. like they just didn't care, right? But this thing just completely dominated the competition. We're talking about competition like some big, big companies. And the contract was awarded by the Austrian military, over 25,000 Gen 1 Glock 17 uh, delivered. And from there, the, world, the word spread like a wildfire all around the world, people started adopting it. In 1986, I believe, the very first police department was like Colby, Kansas, I think. A police department adopted it, but a mass adoption was like a larger department was Miami PD in 1987-ish in that era. And they got the Gen 1 Glock 17s and the NYPD and then so on and so forth. And next, next thing you know, everybody has Glocks. And, and there was a reason for that because, it, guys, if it was just a hype, first of all, 25,000 wouldn't be delivered to Austrian military. And then throughout the world, obviously, if this was kind of a not working platform or had some issues, we would all know about it. And the, reason, and the reason we know this, over 22 million of Glocks made, uh, just the most uh, recent report that I read, I mean, come on. There's a reason for that. And then of course, because of Glock's invention of this polymer body thing, well, other companies follow suit and they kind of gave us different uh, tech, not like different uh, weapon systems. Right, right. You know, and even before that, I mean, the mil military was utilizing Glocks before that. I know they've transitioned over to M17s and M18s yeah. now, but before that, obviously the proof was in the pudding for what they were using them for. Exactly. So, well, they, they fell asleep behind the wheel when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to the uh, M17, M18 uh, contract. You got to upgrade at some point. So exactly. That's and that's the thing with Glocks, man. Right? Like they don't want to change anything. Like I, truly, they're like, you know what? It just works. And they just make these very little changes, like Gen 5 Glock 45 here with the uh, Steiner MPS uh, a close emitter dot here. If you notice, this is Gen 5. We got the front serrations right. at Gen 5. Like. <laughs> Here, this is the Glock 19M, kind of helped design by the FBI. Right. This is actually the very, like this, not this serial number, but Glock 19M is the one that I began carrying in the Quantico. And then it was too small for these babies right here. Gotcha. So <laughs> they gave me the Glock pause. 17. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> but see, no front serrations. But uh, to <clears throat> piggyback off what you're saying here in reference to Glock not really changing too much in reference to yeah. what they do with their handguns, when you're training, especially in law enforcement, you don't want a bunch of changes. You don't want a bunch of different things you have to train. New recruits, older guys, whoever it may be that's that are transitioning over to new pistols. So when the PDs are changing out their pistols, whatever it may be, their quarterly shoots, training, things like that, you have one steady flat line and training base that you're utilizing when it comes to it. Um, there's that aspect of it, and then there's the aspect of simple things such as breaking them down, cleaning them, so on and so forth when it comes to that. And these are a lot of things that people don't think of when it comes to this, but these it just makes it a whole lot easier for policies and all the stuff that, as civilians, you don't think of because you don't need to think about that they need to have in place. Because when you have five different guns in a police department, yeah. it's, it could become extremely chaotic very quick. Exactly, very, very good point, dude. So there's another reason like why a lot of comp uh, companies, uh, departments use Glocks. I mean, of course, SIGs and Smiths as well, but more Glocks, like over 65% Glocks are being utilized, well, over 65% police departments utilize clocks. Right. And the reason for that is it's so simple. When it's simple, as I said, less malfunction, much easier to maintain. And you brought up training, which is a great point. Yes, so again, not all cops are gun people. You gotta grab a bunch of new people who are starting the academy, 50 people, you put them on a firing line. Having something super simple where right. you can explain them very simply how this works and the takedown and all that just makes things so much easier right. on a training aspect. And of course, that directly translates into a reliability as well, which uh, I can't, I would love to, I wanna show you guys how easy to field strip this thing. But unfortunately, due to YouTube guidelines, I can't. So with that being said, what I'm gonna do is do my quick do uh, safety mic. check right here, show and the then trick real quick. turn, do this. They call them this is blind. how simple it was. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, this is the polymer body super light fire control module right here, just to show it to the camera. I don't know which camera. There you go, I'll go to John, so he feels special. Uh, right? <laughs> okay, so it's right here. You can't remove this thing, which we'll say you second. can, we'll get that in a, in a second. But this is it, right? This is super simple. Then we've got a guide rod for Glock 19M, which is recoil spring assembly and a barrel, you're done. This is it, you clean all this up, lube it up, you're good to go. And if you want to do any further maintenance, 
This is the striker right here. You just pop this back plate. Again, there's a proper way to do it. An armor, spe specifically an armor should do that. And uh, you can remove the striker and maintain it that way yourself. But that's it, guys. Like, you look at it, it's these, you know? This is your Glock. Because it's simple like that, it works. It's a very simple baseline when it comes to that. Exactly, and what makes these guys really, really popular and why law enforcement agencies utilize them, price is a huge factor. Glock is able to deliver them at a very, very low cost for departments for mass adoption, but absolutely aftermarket uh, parts compatibilities. So if you bought a, let's say this is a Glock 17 Gen 5 right here. This is a base, base gun right here. If you look at the uh, sights, these are, there you go, John. Basic sights right here. I, I'm not a big fan of them. They work, but they're basic Glock sights. So if you bought this gun and you wanted to kind of make it your own, you can actually change the sights. You can change the slide stop lever, make it more robust for you. You can change the trigger. You can actually do some grip inserts. You can even change the uh, magazine release button here, magwell. Uh, what else? Obviously, different lights, flashlights, flashlights, all that. If you want to go. Barrels as right. well. You know that they could call those uh, match grade barrels. Like there's so much you can do. Like you can they even sell like these different color like back plates that right. you wanted to put on on there. Even like the there's a little line on the back if you want to. <laughs> exactly. Some company even made like on a Glock specifically like counter. Right. Every time you're firing, so stuff like that. So if you actually bought a Glock, you could just do a ton of things to it. It's and the parts are readily available uh, be, all around the internet because so many companies are doing it because they all want that market share. So that makes this Glock much uh, that much more desirable. And you know, six hour is not all that behind either because six hour actually is adopted by the military, which now just supercharged. It. Right. And I mean, similar to what you said, that's a clear weapon there. Yeah. Uh, modularity in reference to that. Again, I did a little magic trick there, broke it down there. Oh, wow. So <laughs> different slides you work with. And then the thing that I loved about SIG, when I say the modularity before, is your trigger grouping. So That looks a lot like honestly, my echelon. This is the only piece here that's going to be serialized. So this is your firing. Um, so that's trigger. the gun. This is your gun. When everything's serialized, what you're purchasing is this. So by having this here, you could trade out if you need anything um, in reference to bigger paws, like we were speaking about before. Yeah. You get a larger grip, smaller grip, depending on who you're dealing with here. Different slides, if you want something that you're able to put a red dot on or okay. not. Like we said, um, you could go from a 40 cal to a 9 mil to a 10 mil, a 357, whatever it may be that you're looking at. So it literally is that simple when it comes to modularity with SIG. And then also, obviously, different mag size. You want Capacity. to go from your 17, 21, or now they have the 30. That you could run with um, and play with that, dude. That's this is really really cool. Like Sig, I, my hat is off to Sig. They, I know Springfield Echelon just recently came out with something something similar, but obviously Sig did it first, right? This is so cool. Right. Like this is your gun. This is the serialized item. You can buy your barrel. You can buy your, uh, your slide your body. You could just customize it so easily. And these parts are very. Are these, oh, let me ask you this question, and I don't know this. So you can buy them from SIG, obviously, but what about aftermarket companies selling, like, So yeah, there's like aftermarket companies, you can um, purchase different aspects of it, and it's gonna be SIG's lowers that you're purchasing, but you can have customizations done too. So can you actually buy a, this grip? Uh, besides from SIG? Yes, yeah, so they do have other aftermarket um, options that you have when it comes to that. So when you speak modularity, I mean, it, wow. the, the door is open. Well, <laughs> that, that is really cool. Uh, we know Glock 47, Glock came out with Glock 47, which is the modular, well, well that's kind of more like semi-modular, let's just say, because it's not like this. You cannot remove the fire control module, but what you can do is you can actually remove, uh, if you have a Glock 19 and Glock 17, uh, you can basically come up with four different guns, right? This is a Glock 45, like Glock 17 body and Glock 19 slide. And with that one, again, you can kind of come up with four different styles of Glocks. Right. So at least it's something. It's, it's pretty cool. It's something in reference to that, but based off the topic that we were speaking on in reference to the job, this is all great in the civilian market and everything yeah. we're doing, but when it comes to the job, I think you want to keep it simple. Make sure the firearm does what it has to do when it's supposed to do it. I can't argue with the Glock when it comes to that. I agree, man. I Absolutely. Like I again, I we try to give you guys our opinion as honest as we possibly can, 
And if I carry this to depend my life on it, I will of course recommend this to you guys. Again, this is not sponsored by Glock. Some people are gonna say, oh, you know, this, this is a Glock fanboy here, you know. No, <clears throat> you know what, try to be carrying a sick butt in this video. <clears throat> but. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to be honest. Forget about all this. I mean, M17, M18, mm -hmm. pretty co cool. But this guy, you're actually making me very curious about this. This is old little Lamborghini right there. This, this is actually, this feels really good. And I try to dry fire this a little bit. I can't wait to shoot this thing. So. Because it's lights out. Yeah. But anyways, Glocks overall, you just can't beat them, dude. I mean, they're just, they're simple. So if you're kind of, if, if you're watching this video and you're trying to figure out, hey, you know what? I want to go buy a handgun and you don't have one. Between these three, if I'm being 100% honest, I'll be like, yeah, go get yourself a Glock and kind of uh, customize your own. Yeah, and, and piggybacking off of that, it's, I think you kind of have to just weigh out what you're looking for in a handgun at that point in time. You're looking for a Glock. If you're looking to use a real gun, <laughs> you have a SIG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. no, it's a great point. What you're looking for, of right. course. What is it for? Exactly. Law enforcement wise, yeah. I would say you can't go wrong going down either route here when it comes to this um, but again they are all reliable pistols when it comes to it they have been battle tested yeah. in every way from Glock through your Smith & Wesson to your SIG um, so they're all, all viable options here which is a beautiful thing is to have options as human beings we love that yeah um, as, as police officers we love having options so I would say <laughs> with that on the table I mean dude again when I say buy a Glock like you if you're like new, you want something and you want to make it your own, that's because of the customization, yeah. right? Or else, obviously, you cannot possibly go wrong with any of these guns. But that's my opinion. Uh, I've carried these two and you carried that and our opinions are so far positive. Like, we're not saying, oh man, this, I carry this one but I wouldn't touch this thing. We're not saying that. So therefore, whichever one you pick, you're probably not gonna go wrong. Um, but that's it, do you want to add anything else? No, thank you for having me, I appreciate it once Absolutely. again. I enjoy this. Oh, you're gonna have you more, bro. We got some more videos to do. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, guys, I hope this was helpful to you guys. So let us know your thoughts in the comment section. What are your experience with Glocks, Smith & Wesson, and SIGs in this case? I know there are other uh, uh, brands out there. In this case, we just wanted to use most utilized. Smith & Wesson, Glock, obviously SIG. Right. Just let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Go check out cfcontest.com. Do you know what? CFContest.com is? No, it? please inform me. You don't? Okay, CFContest.com, again, I, I always say, veteran class firearms viewers know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you're new, when you go there, you're gonna see certain things. And unfortunately, I can't be really clear because of YouTube, but that may later on be in your safe, or on your wall, in your range bag, or whatever. Sounds so like a good place pretty, to be. Yeah, trust me, for a gun enthusiast, it's a place to go, CFContest.com. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your business. And you're supposed to say God bless. God bless America. Exactly. And we'll see you on the next one.